In this episode, I want to show you how to roll out a new feature to a subset of users, so that way a few users can try it out before it goes out to the masses. And here's the application we'll be working with. It's a simple to-do list application where you can type this in and add a new task to your list here. And there's also some basic user authentication where you can log in as a different user like that. Now that's really all there is to this app. It's very simple, but there is another feature that's not visible here because it's in its own Git branch. So right now I'm in the master branch of this project, but I can check out a separate branch that's called phone to check out this other feature. Now when I hit reload, you can see that now this page has a send to phone link at the bottom under the list where you can type in a phone number and theoretically it would send that list to that phone number maybe as a text message. Now this feature is difficult to test fully in development so I would prefer to roll this feature out slowly to production um, starting with a subset of users. Now there is a Ruby gem to help out with this. It is called Rollout by James Golick and it uses a Redis backend to manage which users are able to see which given features. Let me show you how to add it here. Now, since this uses Redis, you'll need to install that first. I recommend using Homebrew if you're on a Mac, you can just do brew install Redis and that will install Redis for you. And it will provide some instructions on starting it up. Next, go into the gem file of your application and you'll need to add both the Redis gem and the rollout gem here. And don't forget to run the bundle command to install both of those gems. And then you can set up rollout inside of an initializer file. I'll do that inside of the config initializers directory here. Make a new file called um, rollout setup.rb. Now the documentation recommends using global variables here for this, so I'll do that. First we'll set up Redis, we'll be calling redis.new and that'll just use the default port that it's running at. And then we can set up rollout by calling rollout.new and passing in uh, with that Redis instance. And you could do other configuration for rollout in here as well, such as defining a group. So we'll define a group called admin and then what you do is you pass it a block and that accepts a user object and then you can say true or false depending on whether the user belongs in the group. So in this case, we'll check if the admin boolean column returns true for that given user. Now that we have rollout set up, we can use it to select which portions of the application we want to roll out slowly. For example, this send to phone link right here, we want to only show it for a select set of users. So here's what that index template looks like with the send to phone link. And in here we need to wrap this to an if clause so it's only displayed if uh, we have a specified in rollout. So we can call the rollout global variable here and say active with a question mark and then pass it the name of a feature such as phone and then pass it the current user, the current user instance. And then that way, only if we've selected to show this feature to that given user, then it will display that link. Now you'll probably need to restart your application for the gem to take effect and also make sure Redis is running, but then when you hit reload on the application, you'll see that the send to phone link disappeared because by default, all features are off. Now we just have to tell Rollout to activate this feature for a given subset of users. Now I'll be doing this through the Rails console here, but you can also do this maybe through a rake task or even a web user interface. So I'll be accessing this through the rollout variable and then I can call activate group and then pass in the name of the feature such as phone in this case and then the group name such as admin and that will activate that feature for that given group. So now when I reload the page, you can see that send to phone feature is now visible. But if I try switching users here to the other user, which is not an admin, you can see the send to phone feature is not visible. Now, if you ever want to activate every user, you can choose activate group all, and that will activate all users because there's an all group set up by default that is for every user. Now you can also activate individual users. So you could say activate user here and then pass in a user instance. So you could say user find by name and then pass in Ryan here to activate that specific user. Now, since I am logged in as that user, I can hit reload and see that that feature is now available to me because I activated that specific user. Now you can also activate a percentage of users by calling activate percentage and then passing in a number such as 20 and that will activate 20% of the users. And then you can slowly build that number up. And each of these methods have a deactivate version for removing the activation, or you can just pass in rollout.deactivate 
all and then pass in the name of the feature to remove all activations for that given feature. So now if I hit reload, you can see we're back to where we started where I don't have access to that send to phone link. However, I'm still able to access the feature directly if I know the URL, so I'm just hiding the link here so I could say in phone request slash new to access that link page. Now you may want to disable this as well through the controller. So here's what that phone request controller looks like that handles our new feature. Right now I already have some authentication through a before filter, but let me add another before filter here to handle the rollout so that only users who are really able to have access to this do. So this will be through a rollout method. I'll make that private so it's not a controller action. Now I'm just going to paste in the code here because it's basically the same thing that we did in the view where I'm calling rollout.active rollout and checking if the current user is able to access that phone feature. And if they are, then uh, we'll let them through, but otherwise we're going to say access denied and redirect them back to the home page. So now if I hit reload here, because I don't have access to the send to phone page, it says access denied, so that works. Now if you find yourself calling this rollout active method frequently, I suggest moving this into your application controller and just calling it rollout, so that way you can imply the current user there, it makes it a lot cleaner. Now I already have a couple methods in my application controller to help out with authentication, but you can just ignore those. I'm just going to paste in that rollout method so that way it does the same thing that we did before. It's just a lot more concise and convenient. So this means anywhere that I'm calling rollout.active, I can just replace it with this rollout call and I made it a helper method so I can do it inside the view as well. When I called this rollout here, I can just replace this with rollout and then I don't have to pass in the current user. Much cleaner. Now, sometimes it can be difficult to find all of the changes you've made to a code base for a given feature so that you can wrap it in a rollout condition. Well, this is where git branches come in handy. If you keep a separate branch for your feature, you can just call git diff master to find out all the differences in the code base for the master branch compared to the feature branch so you can see what you've added. And then you could just make sure to wrap out these additions in a rollout condition so that they only appear if the user has access to them. So that wraps up how to use the rollout gem to enable features for a specific subset of users. Now there's another gem that goes hand in hand with this called Degrade, also written by James Golick. This allows you to automatically disable features when exceptions occur. Now let me show you how to do this here. For example, in this new send to phone feature, what if the uh, when we're actually sending the list to the phone, maybe an exception is raised, perhaps we're overloading the system and things are starting to break. It would be nice if we can automatically disable this feature and fall back to the old behavior when this happens, and the degrade gem helps us do this. So the first step is to go into the gem file and add the degrade gem into here, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then inside of our rollout setup file, which is the initializer we set up earlier, we can make a uh, degrade phone instance here by calling degrade.new and then passing in the uh, Redis instance. Now there are other options you can pass in here as well, such as the name option, that's the name of the feature, I'll say phone. And I'm also going to set the minimum option to one so that we can test this because it defaults to 100, which is how many times it should be triggered before it uh, checks the failure rate. And then there's also the failure strategy option, which is a lambda that gets triggered when it exceeds the failure rate. And in here we want to disable the send to phone feature, which we can do by calling rollout.deactivate all and passing in phone here to disable that feature. Now there are other options you can pass into here as well, so be sure to check out the readme for the full documentation on that. Now once you have that set up, you can call perform on this degrade instance and then pass in a block and perform your feature inside of there. And then if an exception is raised, it will go through that degrade instance. In our case, this new feature is handled inside of these controller actions, so we can use an around filter here to handle these, I'll call it degrade. And then I'll make that degrade method here. So this will call be called before an action takes place and expect it to yield to that action. So in here I can fetch that uh, degrade phone instance that we made earlier inside of the initializer, and call perform on this, and then call yield here to yield to the actual action. That way it takes place inside of this perform block and any exceptions that are raised get handled through this. Now we can try this out. I've uh, restarted my application because we changed the initializer and I've also re-enabled this send to phone feature. So let's try clicking on this and then typing in a number here 
Then I, when I click send to phone, it's going to raise an exception because that's what I had it do inside of the controller action. But now when I hit reload, it's going to now this time call access denied because it's actually disabling this feature and notice that this link is no longer visible thanks to degrade. Now you'll probably want to improve this error message so it's a little more user friendly if this happens, but this works. So that's how you can use the degrade gem to automatically disable new features when exceptions are raised. So both of these gems are really great, but what if you want something that's a little bit more custom? Perhaps you don't want to use a Redis backend or maybe you don't want to use a user model or something else. Well, in that case, you could probably just create this from scratch and it's not all that too difficult. The rollout gem itself is less than 100 lines of code. Now I'm including some source code in this episode that recreates this rollout feature from scratch so you can get an idea of what's involved. Let me walk you through it briefly here. So what I've done here is generated a new model called rollout using this command. And I'm using an active record database, but if performance is an issue, you can easily swap this out with a different backend. Now most of the logic in here is determining if this rollout should apply to a given user based off of a group, a specific user, or a percentage, just like the rollout gem. And you can also specify a failure rate here based off of a failure count, so if it fails a certain number of times, it disables the rollout. And then going inside the application controller, there are a couple of methods here. One is rollout with a question mark, and this is just like it was with the rollout gem, where it's comparing all of the rollouts matching a given feature name and seeing if any of them match that given user. And also there's a degrade feature method here, which will call to the block. And then if there's an exception is raised, it's going to increment the failure count for all of the matching rollouts. And then the view is exactly the same where we're only displaying the send to phone link if the rollout phone returns true. And the phone request controller is pretty much the same as well, where we uh, have a before filter called rollout and an around filter called degrade. And the rollout before filter is exactly the same where it just redirects if the rollout uh, phone feature isn't enabled. And the degrade just calls degrade feature for that phone feature and passes it through the block so it wraps around the action. All right, with that in place, it works pretty much like it did before, where the feature is disabled by default. Notice no send to phone link here. And to enable that feature, we just need to create a new rollout record here in the console and give it the name of phone and then pass in any other options we want, such as the group option, we can set it to admin, so only the admin users will be able to uh, have that feature enabled. And now when I reload the page, because I'm logged in as an admin, I see the link. Now if I fill this out with a number, I'm going to get an exception because I'm testing the degrade functionality. If I hit reload here, it's going to say feature unavailable because it degraded successfully, disabled that feature when an exception was raised because the failure count was one. So that's how you can recreate that rollout and degrade functionality from scratch so you can use a different backend if you want to or customize it further. That's it. Thanks for watching.